Hello, Ground Control. I'm Paul, and this is Retro Stellar, where a DVR's ability to pause live TV feels like a Doug Henning magic trick. You know, I was recently asked, what's the most interesting thing about you? I pondered it for a bit, and then I realized that the most interesting thing about me happened on day one. I was born in a car. My mom went into labor en route to the hospital, and I made my earthly debut in the passenger seat of a 1964 Volkswagen Beetle. Here's the actual car, which, by the way, my dad drove for over 30 years. It's no wonder that I've always been fascinated by cars. Look, I'm no gearhead. Uh, the mechanical parts are lost on me, but I love how a vehicle can be a work of art. And when TV shows put cool cars on screen, I'm paying attention. So with that in mind, I thought I'd see if I could rank my favorite video vehicles in a segment I'm calling Seven Minutes of Revan, TV's Coolest Cars Ranked. First, the disclaimers. This is an arbitrary list of my personal favorites, and I'm only listing cars here. Uh, the A-Team van and the Mystery Machine aren't here. There's no Optimus Prime, no Chips Motorcycles. And uh, before I start the top seven, here's an honorable mention. That cool Dodge Charger with an embarrassing flag, you know, the General Lee, well, I was raised in the South, and as a kid, Friday night was all about the Dukes of Hazard. Guys, uh, I watched it again, and the show has not aged well. Its only creative element is how many different ways they send that Dodge up and over a ramp. Number seven, the auto car. In the early 80s, Disney's Tron put computer graphics into the mainstream. TV producer Glenn A. Larson took the idea and made Auto Man, a show about a computer programmer who invents a hologram to fight crime. When these two needed to travel, they used the auto car, which was really just a Lamborghini Countach covered in reflective tape. But the effect worked great when combined with high-speed playback and high-tech sounds. Number six, Kit from Knight Rider. Larson made other shows that featured cool vehicles like Magnum P.I. and The Fall Guy, but in 82, he went all in with Knight Rider, featuring Kit, a talking Trans Am. Kit was voiced by William Daniels and driven by some guy named Hasselhoff. I was in college when the show was popular, so I never really watched many episodes, but the car is sensational. And here's some trivia for you. Kit's red hood sensor is modeled after a Battlestar Galactica Cylon and uses the same sound effect. Number five, the Munster Coach. Now, I love classic monsters, and as a result, the Munsters is one of my favorite sitcoms. The show resembled other mid-60s spooky comedies like The Addams Family and Bewitched, but unlike Gomez or Darren, Herman got to drive a sweet hot rod, the Munsters Coach a supercharged Model T. In the episode Hot Rod Herman, he loses the car in a drag race and Grandpa builds his own racer, the Dragula, to win it back. The coach was so popular, it even inspired a novelty song entitled, Here Comes the Munster Coach. Number four, Black Beauty from the Green Hornet. In 1966, at the height of the James Bond craze, ABC television launched The Green Hornet, a show about a debonair crime fighter with cool gadgets. The series was short-lived and became a trivia question. What show gave Bruce Lee his big break? But if you watch the reruns, you will quickly see its real star was Black Beauty, a tricked out Chrysler Imperial crown. Loaded with high-tech extras, the coolest thing about the beauty might have been its garage. With the push of a button, she revolved into view from a secret pit and exited into the streets through a sliding billboard. Really slick. Number three, Starsky and Hutch's Grand Torino. I can't remember what I ate for lunch yesterday, but I know exactly what I was doing in the summer of 1975. My best friend and I were in the 90 degree heat, wearing our jackets, collars popped, pretending to be Starsky and Hutch. Though I was a sandy haired wasp, I insisted on playing the dark haired streetwise Starsky, down to the navy beanie and Adidas knockoffs. The only thing missing from our adventures was their Ford Grand Torino muscle car, nicknamed the Striped Tomato. The Torino didn't have any gadgets other than a magnetic red light for the roof, but with 435 horses, it didn't need them. Reproductions of the car still roam the highways, and I bet they all have dents in the hood from kids like me scrambling over it, chasing perps on the mean streets of Bay City. Number two, Speed Racer's Mach 5. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. He's gaining on you so you better look alive. He's busy revving up the powerful Mach 5. That theme song gives you the whole plot of the 1967 anime series produced by Tatsunoko Pro and it's simply the best cartoon about cars ever made. Forget Speed Buggy, forget Wacky Races, forget Penelope Pit Stop, forget Motor Mouse and Auto Cat, forget Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. Jeez, how many bad cartoons about cars did Hanna-Barbera make? Speed Racer is a great kid's show. The sprint sequences are exciting. The storylines are silly but engaging. 
50 years after watching it for the first time as a toddler, I still love it. The Mach 5 has it all. Cool lines, a boss engine, and a steering wheel dotted with defensive functions, from a jumping jack to cutter blades to a homing robot bird. The show's creator, Tatsuo Yoshida, says he designed it to look like the cars in James Bond and Elvis movies. Speed himself even favors the mid-60s king, pompadour, white pants, and neckerchief. Number one, the Batmobile. No plot twist here. Yes, my number one car is obviously the Batmobile from the 1966 Batman series. Surprisingly, this signature vehicle was actually a rush job. Originally, car customizer Dean Jeffries was meticulously detailing a 1959 Cadillac for the show when ABC suddenly pushed up Batman's air date. Jeffries resigned, and George Barris, the king of the customizers, stepped up with a concept car from his own personal collection, a 1955 Lincoln Futura with a bubble windshield and slick tail fins. Barris and his team added the distinctive paint job and a host of funky options requested by the studio, including a bat scope, bat symbol hubcaps, and that fiery turbine exhaust. It's been half a century, and the car is still a stunner. In 2013, the original Batmobile was auctioned off for a whopping $4.6 million. And though my version may be a bargain by comparison, the feelings it triggers are just as valuable. So that's it. The top seven cars in TV history. If I left out your favorite, please let me know in the comments or message me on Twitter. Well, my seven minutes are up, so I gotta burn rubber. Until next time, this is Retro Stellar, remembering yesterday's tomorrow's today. Thank you so much for watching. Please take a second and click the subscribe button to see future videos. Go to overjupiter.com for the best sci-fi, superhero, and pop culture t-shirts on this or any planet. Use the code RETRO15 to save 15% store-wide. See you next time.